Once you're cool and understand something, I believe you got to have a sense of humor. How many of you agree your biggest problem is not working with tools, it's not working with machines, it's working with people? Oh, come on, tell the truth. How many of you agree sometimes you work with goofy people? And how many of you agree half of them are in your family? Ask a guy if his shirt is dirty, he says, let me see. <laughs> now, I think I can wear this one tomorrow. <laughs> and your wife will say, but you wore it today. Smells good. <laughs> well, at least hang it up. What for? I'm going to wear it tomorrow. <laughs> I was in the bomb squad for a while, but turns out, talk about turnover in that department. <laughs> And my lieutenant never once liked my sense of humor. We kind of had our own shirts. We made it up. And the front of my shirt said, Police Bomb Squad. And the back of my shirt said, If you see me running, try to keep up. <laughs> you see, Dave, if you see the Bomb Squad guy running. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. This guy's good. <laughs> Okay, maybe that's not it. <laughs> it's no problem when you've got a 10-year-old. Your kid's 10 years old. Go clean your room. Okay. Your kid's 11 years old. Go clean your room. I don't think so. <laughs> How many of you have heard this before? I don't think so. I'm like, so sure. As if. <laughs> no way. Whatever. You know? A brick wall, shower curtain, talk to my hand because the face is not listening. You ever heard that one? The one I really love is when they wind up their neck, get in your face and give you that, duh. How many of you heard that one before? Well, let me tell you right now, I can honestly tell you the truth, being a parent before you in 1998, duh is where child abuse comes from. <laughs> okay, take your time with these things. This is not going to be the quick group, is it? No, it's a quick group. They must not have engineers here. Okay, so... <laughs> because I can slow this down. Anyway, doesn't this sound like fun? And so I ask you, why hire just a speaker when you can effectively bring in a professional who creates an experience to remember? A 10-year veteran of NSA, a member of our National Board of Directors from New Orleans, Louisiana, your Western Educational Workshop Chair, the speaker with a point, CSB Bruce Wilkinson. You've probably noticed that my materials have a lot of swords in them. That's because my clients know me as the speaker with a point. Everything I say or do has a point to it. Humor, enthusiasm, storytelling, all have a point. See, the sword has always been identified with Wilkinson, my family name. The sword also represents respect, honor, and integrity. These are the same characteristics that managers and supervisors have to have to manage and motivate today's employees. In this upcoming clip, I'll use a sword story from the past that applies to today's leadership challenges. How many of you have ever heard this phrase, we need to draw a line in the sand? How many of you knew it came from the Battle of the Alamo? My son was seven years old, and he said, Dad, I want to go to the Alamo. I said, Kyle, why do you want to go to the Alamo? He said, I want to see where John Wayne died. <laughs> I said, we got a lot of places to visit, but we're not going to Iwo Jima. <laughs> I went to the Alamo, and I was just amazed, and I've since studied it. It's just an incredible leadership story, and not many people know that. How many of you saw the movie, The Alamo? William B. Travis was the colonel of the Alamo. He was assigned by Sam Houston in the movie that would be Richard Boone. William B. Travis was Lawrence Harvey. And you see, he was assigned by Sam Houston to defend the Alamo at all costs so that Houston could raise and train an army. He sent messages out. He wrote for help. He, it's all in the museum of the Alamo. He asked for assistance. And he came up with 148 Texicans and other volunteers. Now, if you have any Hispanic heritage in the room, this Alamo story is not about who had a right to the land. It's about fighting for what you believe in, so let's skip that for a second. Travis never thought they were going to die. He wasn't to be a hero, you see, because he was waiting for a relief column led by Colonel James Fannin. 
who had 332 volunteers and Texicans. My only concern here is 23 Tennesseans. So you better let me know what's in your mind. I'd have thought that would have been obvious to you. It's as simple as this. There's Santa Ana with 7,000 men. Up here is the Sabine River. Somewhere around here, Sam Houston is trying to organize an army. And right in between is the Alamo. Santa Ana can't go around and leave a fort along his lines of communication. He must reduce the Alamo by storm. Every minute of time we buy for Sam Houston is another precious minute in the life of Texas. And Crockett, nobody is ever going to say that William Barrett Travis did not buy every minute possible. Makes sense. Why don't you tell Boy that? Because a commander does not have to explain his every decision. Explain to me. I have great respect for you, Crockett. William B. Travis was not a well-liked officer, but he was well-respected. And he knew that Fannin had been wiped out. And he could have not told them, because they agreed to what? Defend the Alamo. But if you respect your men, you tell them the what? Truth. And he goes out just like in the movie. He calls them down from the wall. Davy Crockett, John Wayne, Richard Widmark, Jim Bowie. Of course, they carried him. He was on a bed. A cannon fell on him the night before. It was a tragic guerrilla raid. <coughs> And he calls them all down and he says, I got bad news. He says, Fanner's not coming. He's been wiped out. In fact, not all of Fanner's men were killed. They gave up and they did a death march with them, like back to Patan, and that didn't kill them. So Santa Ana lined them up against the wall. He had them all executed. He said, Fanner's not coming. You are discharged should you choose to leave. I won't hold you to your promise to defend the Alamo because should you stay, you will surely die. I have been ordered by Sam Houston to hold my 23 regular army men and we will defend the Alamo because each day we stay allows Sam Houston a chance to raise an army and defeat Santa Ana to build the Republic of Texas. But I can't wait for you to decide overnight. I can't wait till the guns come blazing and that beautiful army with all the colors, they're just the prettiest army you've ever seen, 6,000 of them attacks because you see Travis is a military man and he must deploy his defenses and set his perimeter. So he takes out his saber and he draws a line in the sand. And that's where it comes from. He said, I need you to cross if you're staying. If you can go, we will not record your name as one who is a coward. And nothing will be said unjust to you. But I need you to decide now. 